People having vast experiences in life often advise their young ones to toil hard and Bhagwan will take care of the rest. It makes sense as you can only control what is controllable. Patels understand it quite well. That is why they are the most successful motel owning millionaires in the US. Let's understand their formula for success. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national social political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Piyush and if you haven't subscribed to the TFI English channel yet, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. Coming back to the story, in this video I will tell you about Patel's journey from farm owning community in India to motel owning community in the US. Let's begin. The first Patel to make a prominent name for himself in the US was Naranji Patel who had arrived on US shores in 1922. He was the first one to pioneer the concept of Patels leasing any sort of property in the states. At the time, leasing a single room occupancy or SRO used to cost around $2,500 for anyone. Naranji set up his first SRO and invited other Patels to follow suit. Naranji used to provide food and free lodging to other Patels in his SRO. But the main thrust of the idea was provided by a migrant named Kanjibai Desai. The motel in which Kanji lived was owned by a Japanese American. Suddenly, Japan and the United States got entangled in the Second World War. On February 19, 1942, FDR, the US president, issued orders to effectively evict 120,000 Japanese Americans. Kanji ended up buying the motel of his Japanese American employer for pennies. Kanji used to provide lodging to other Patels along with the salaries for the work they did. After the end of the war, Loose Seller Act of 1946 allowed some leverage to Indian migrants. Patels staying in India pounced upon the opportunity. Kanji is alone said to be the chief catalyst behind creating over 30 Patel hoteliers in San Francisco from 1947 to 1955. By the end of the 50s, the motel industry was going through a transition phase. On the other hand, the United States wanted cheap labor to increase industrial output. So it liberalized migration in the country. Simultaneously, the entire African continent was also going through a tumultuous phase. The most severe of them was felt by Uganda. Ugandan dictator Idi Amin was fearful that Asians established in his country will eat up opportunities for local Ugandans. He gave them 90 days to evict the country. Patils were the prominent of the lot. They also had to follow the orders. Some came back to India while others migrated to places like Canada and the United Kingdom among others. However, a large chunk of them decided to turn to their US brethren. Simultaneously, many affluent Patils from India were also migrating to the US in order to find a sense of freedom from the tightly knit joint family structure. The influx of Africa and India based Patils turned out to be a booster shot for the community's prospect in the States. Motels became a second home for the newly arrived migrants. Most of them were not much educated and could be employed only for improving basic perception around these motels. Patels started to operate these motels as a family. Additionally, if the space did not allow, people were hired on fixed wages. The only difference between a family member of the owner and the staff working there was that staff was not provided with free lodging. Husband and wife mainly used to do everything in the motels. The family used to cook food for the customers and clean among other stuff. No family member had any qualm about cleaning even the most dirtiest of the places in the motel. Even cleaning the bathroom used to be the owners of the family. The line between personal and professional life was not there. Whenever a customer arrived, the family had to switch off from their personal time to spend a few minutes earning revenue. Working together as a unit brought two kinds of advantages for the Patels. First one, due to it being a family business, members used to give it their all. Secondly, they were able to save a lot of money which later helped them in acquiring new motels. Those who worked on daily wages but had entrepreneurial ambitions were provided loans by the community members. These loans were not based on any kind of collateral. In fact, even the interest rate was zero. 
the trust in the community was so deep rooted that no member of the community used to run away with the money. That level of trust can even be seen today. There is no better example of trust on word of mouth than this. The loan program provided a further boost to Patel's expansionism. They were already becoming a hotbed for travelers due to their cheap pricing. But now they started adding facilities as well. Initially, to pull customers towards them, motels used to give free coffee, donuts, and waffles, among other snacks. As revenue increased, so did incentives to customers and henceforth the customer base of these motels. According to a report by the Tribune, Indians owned more than 50% of motels in the United States. 70% of those were owned by Patels. Today, one Patel family owns nearly five to six motels. According to a 2014 report, 17,000 motels in the United States are owned by Patels. Interestingly, this came despite the initial language barrier faced by these immigrants. They had kicked off their basic operations in broken English. Now their kids are studying in Ivy League universities and return to their family business with a cruder understanding of business world, contributing to the development of their family-owned enterprise. Today, a swimming pool is a big incentive for travelers to stop their vehicles at these motels, situated somewhere between two faraway cities. Patels are peaceful and do not hamper anyone else's interest. They keep their heads down and work day and night for increasing their trust among customers. Probably this is why new motel owners are irked with them. White Americans are now using phrases such as American-owned to advertise their motels, but Patels are unfazed.